In this inspirational and highly informative live lecture presented to a group of chiropractic professionals, Dr. Wayne Dyer offers his penetrating wit and wisdom on how to develop your own healing powers, as well as that of others. Dr. Dyer emphasizes that the secrets to healing are not somewhere out there, but rather healing is something that takes place inside each and every one of us, occurring when we connect to our source and bring spirit to the disease. He emphasizes that healers need to be able to banish doubt and see their clients as individuals who already possess the capacity to heal themselves. That is, those with health challenges need to have someone in their energy field who truly believes that healing can take place. Dr. Dyer explains how to operate at the higher level where doubt and ego consciousness don't exist. And he also relates fascinating and entertaining stories based on his own personal life, interactions with kahunas, yogis, and other powerful individuals, and the world of spirituality and alternative healing. And now, Hay House is proud to present Dr. Wayne Dyer in Secrets of Your Own Healing Power. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was uh, upstairs this morning reading uh, USA Today. I don't know if any of you saw the Tuesday edition of USA Today, um, where the lady whose daughter has been in a coma for 30 years. Did any of you see that? Um, how she has cared for her in an unconditional loving way is a uh, story that I wrote a, uh, a book about four or five years ago called The Promise is a Promise. Thirty years ago, this um, woman, Kay O'Bara, was speaking uh, to her daughter in the hospital as she was slipping into a diabetic coma. And she said to her daughter, looked at her and said, you won't leave me, will you, mommy? And her mother said, I would never leave you, I promise. And a promise is a promise. And 30 years later, she has been caring for her daughter, who is not on life support. Um, every two hours, she has to be fed. And every four hours, she has to have uh, an injection of insulin. She's never slept in a bed. She's never bought herself any clothes or even been to a movie. And when I saw that story five years ago, I uh, decided that I would uh, make contact with her and, and write her story. And when I appeared with her on Oprah Winfrey a couple of years ago, Oprah said to her, why do you do this? Because it's been going on for 30 years now. She said, I do it because um, God asked me to do it. And God never asks you to do any more than you can handle. And the show was about people who had been in comas for a long period of time. And all of them had been on the show and were complaining and talking about how difficult it was and what a struggle it was and what a burden uh, it was to have someone that you had to care for who was uh, in such a state. And when Oprah asked her, she said, uh, it's not a burden, it's my honor to serve my daughter and to serve God in this way. And in a deep meditation, a couple of years later, I wrote a, uh, I asked what I could do to help them to get out of the debt that they had amassed. And I wrote a book in, in two weeks telling her story called A Promise is a Promise. And uh, now I think Oprah is going to do a full hour with her and tell a story of unconditional love unmatched in any that I've ever known. When my wife and I walked into that room for the very first time, it was as if we had entered into a sanctuary, a place where unconditional love had been being practiced. And I'll bring it around here as I speak to you this afternoon uh, on the importance of this notion of unconditional love as one of the pathways that we have to go through on our way to mastery. And I was proud to write this book and have all of the profits and royalties and proceeds and everything go directly to them. 
and um, we're slowly helping to get her out of debt. But the most astonishing thing of all, and the part that they left out of the newspaper story, which I thought was interesting, was that um, she talks to and sees the Blessed Mother. And whether you believe it or not is not of any concern or relevance to her whatsoever. She feels the Blessed Mother is there with her. And there are people who have been in her presence who have been healed of um, tumors and things like this. And one of her kindergarten, she was a school teacher before her daughter went into the coma. And um, she uh, had a kindergarten student, her name was Joy. And Joy found out about what had happened uh, many, many, many years later. She is now a mother of uh, two, actually three children now. And two of them have cystic fibrosis and have been being treated for cystic fibrosis for four years. And one day, Kay told Joy, who has dedicated her life to helping Kay out. She's there almost every single day, helping her with the feeding and helping her with the grocery shopping and, and all of these kind of things. One day, Kay um, came to Joy and she said to her, she said, uh, your children no longer have cystic fibrosis. And Joy said, what do you mean? She said, I talked to the Blessed Mother last night. And um, she said that they have now been healed and that they no longer have this disease. Well, Joy was crying and sobbing and all that and went, of course, to, back to her medical doctors. And her doctors confirmed that they no longer could find any indication of cystic fibrosis. So in the original story that was written, the doctors said that she had been misdiagnosed. I called the doctors and asked them if they had been misbilled. <laughs> because for four years they were treated for having cystic fibrosis and now they're completely free of it. And that miracle and others were not told in the story, which is of interest to me. But anyway, in today's USA Today, um, there's a story of a man who's opening tonight here in Las Vegas at the Orleans Hotel showroom. His name's Jerry Lewis. You've probably heard of him. <laughs> and he's now 73 years old, and he's going to perform a two-and-a-half-hour break free with a 30-piece orchestra beginning tonight and four times a year. Now, this is a man who tried to commit suicide uh, about six years ago and talked about it. And he had a gun in his mouth, and he came within a second of pulling that trigger and killing himself. As he says in here, 11 specialists looked at him. He had been suffering from uh, meningitis when he was on his Australian tour. And he had been medicated for everything from balance and hearing and hypertension, blood pressure, getting dizzy, and so on. And today, he's completely free of all of that. He says to keep in shape, he works out on a treadmill in the morning and a bike at night. I nap 20 minutes during the day and I, when I can, and it does wonders. He's also producing a, uh, a remake of The Bellboy. And every day, he says, I get up and I feel like a winner. And you know what the 11 specialists who looked at him all said? He's been over-medicated. He's now medication-free. Medication-free. And he's also free of hypertension, imbalance, and all of the things that have been driving this man for the last 10 or 15 years into a state of literal insanity, as he's talked about it. It's a, um, it's a way I wanted to open today, because I think your profession, of course, understands and knows the value of treating people in a way in which we understand that the uh, 